All right, so we're gonna show you how to do the driver's side axle, and what we have already done is removed this inner panel and taken the wheel off. The next thing you'll do is straighten out this cotter pin right here with a set of needle nose pliers, and then you'll grab it and pry it out. And leverage is your friend. Whenever you're working on a car, you wanna do leverage. You don't wanna be muscling everything like how I am right now. Cause you will lose. So see if we can't tap this guy through. And continue on. Next we have our 32 millimeter flange nut and we'll remove that with our impact gun. And once you've done that, since we're replacing this axle and we don't care about it too much, we're gonna go ahead and hammer this guy out. So I'm gonna be very careful not to hit any of these studs because this is for your wheel and you don't want that to happen. If you're not comfortable using a hammer in this area, just put your lug nuts back on and that'll protect these. But I'm pretty confident in my ability. And now that that's broken loose, we're gonna go ahead and remove the knuckle from the coilover assembly. So to do that, you need to remove these two, which uh, they are 21 millimeters. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my socket and my breaker bar and go to work. Once we have it loose, we'll go ahead and we'll pull this wheel speed sensor off. And all that does is you just pull on either side, it's a little grommet, it's just stuck in there. And then for this guy, we're gonna take a flathead screwdriver and we're just gonna pry it off. So I'm just gonna wedge it and leverage is key in this world. So you're just gonna tap, tap, tap. And it should come right out for you. Put it in a safe place so you don't lose it. And then remove your brake hose from the clip. And now what you'll do is go ahead and finish on doing this. And we'll do the same for the lower. And don't lose your nuts and your bolts. Give it a little bit of a wiggle and very slowly lower it down because you may need to grab a bungee cord to support these but luckily we have enough space so we don't have to and now we're going to go ahead and push the rest of the axle through using our hammer now that we have this axle out we'll be able to continue with removal so how i remove these is if i'm very lucky i can get the C-clip to just pop right off. So we're gonna go ahead and try that. And how I do it is I make sure that I'm perfectly even and I just kinda chug and tug and it's starting to come out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a oil drain pan underneath. So now that that's coming out and we're getting it captured in our oil drain pan. We'll go ahead and pull the rest of the axle out. And Holy moly, lots of oil. All right, so the resistance that you're feeling right here is a C-clip, and this C-clip is what keeps this axle from just popping right off when you take the wheel off and you take the nut off. So that's what you have to keep, that's what you have to keep in mind when you're removing this, is you have to have it perfectly flat, because if you have it at any sort of an angle when you're trying to remove it, the C-clip is not gonna allow it to pop off. We have our new axle here, and you can see the C-clip right there. And we're gonna go ahead and put this thing in. Now when you're installing this, you wanna be very careful because this is the most common place for you to damage this axle seal, which is right here. And you don't want that to happen. So we're gonna go ahead and just slip this guy in. And we're gonna be very careful not to cut and damage the axle seal. So I'm gonna come back in, make sure that I'm coming in perfectly straight. Don't touch the axle seal. 
And then as I get it into position, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of turn it and wiggle it until I can kind of get it in. That C clip's already fighting me. Okay, so we had a little bit of a debacle. We were we had received the wrong axle, and uh, now we have the correct axle. We're gonna go ahead and install it. So all you have to do is line it up perfectly. Don't mess up the seal and slip it into position and then you'll rock it back and forth and clip it right in. So when I mean back and forth, you're going left to right in your hand, back and forth meaning the front and rear of the car. And what that does is it allows these splines on the other end to engage with that differential. Once you've done that, you're just gonna go ahead and take a little bit of grease and grease these splines up a little bit so that it slips right into the spindle and hub assembly. Then you'll pick the spindle and hub assembly up and do the same wiggling to get it in. Move your wheel speed sensor out of the way. Try to straighten your wheel up. And slip everything into position. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna reuse the nut that came with it because the nut that, we're gonna reuse the nut that we took off because the nut that came with it does not have a flange and that's really important to us. Magic hand helped. So we're just gonna go ahead and put the flange on. For all of you watching, Magic Hand is a cameraman. And then with our torque gun and a 32 millimeter socket, we'll go ahead and put it all back together. So I'm just gonna snug that up because I don't wanna tighten it up until I have installed my two 21 millimeter bolts. And we'll just go ahead and tighten them by hand and then grab our impact and really make it happen. Now that we have this back on good and snug, we'll go ahead and torque that down. that's on, we'll go ahead and install our cotter pin. And bend it so that if the nut does come loose, the axle won't fall out. So now everything's tight, so we're gonna go ahead and put our harnesses back together. So you'll take your wheel speed sensor, little rubber grommets, and slip those back into position. And then you'll take your brake hose, and come down, insert the hose, and come back up. Then you'll grab your middle clip, and you'll look at it, you'll see the bubble side, and you'll install it so that the bubble side is up. You'll get it sort of in position, and give it some slight taps with a hammer. This hammer's way overkill, but just some light taps. And there you have it. So that's how you change that axle. We're go we will go ahead, put this panel back on with the clips and we'll wipe this off because I got some grease on it so we'll just clean this off with some brake parts cleaner put the wheel back on and take the vehicle for a short test drive thank you for watching our repair video I want to take a moment to highlight a really wonderful local small business meat crafters they make a bunch of really great products in the meat world but our personal favorite is the skinny salami we'll be able to post a link in this video for you to check out more about them but I want to express to you how important it is to shop local Every single time that you support a local business, that money stays inside our community. And that is something that is incredibly important to the Revit Auto team.